G'day cheeky dogs, today we're going to be talking about Mackenzie and specifically what happened to Mackenzie in the episode space from when he was a child all the way up to him being seven years old now. Now this episode is already out in Australia, however it will be out on July 12th on Disney Worldwide. But I've got to say it's honestly probably one of the most confusing episodes of Bluey and you either need to watch it multiple times to kind of understand what's going on or you need an explanation for it, which is what I'm going to be doing here in this video. This episode of Bluey is called space and that's because there's a lot of little just like hidden details that if you don't see them happening you don't always see the link ups of what's going on and you kind of need to know what happens sort of towards the end to understand the beginning so I'm just gonna try and explain all of it and basically how it relates to childhood abandonment issues and separation anxiety Mackenzie why did you leave me behind what we didn't! You did! You left me behind on purpose! Because this is a really rare episode where we see a child get triggered into a traumatic memory. And that's something that Bluey slash Ludo Studios have never done before. Which is why I think this episode space is going to be so unique and so special for a lot of people who have experienced separation anxiety or anxiety in general or have had that feeling of being abandoned as a child. And just in case you weren't aware, separation anxiety is actually the most common form of childhood anxiety disorders. Because of that, I think a lot of people are gonna really resonate with Mackenzie, so let's just dive into it so I can explain it all for you so that you will understand when you're watching this episode space. Wait, stop the ship! Why? We've lost Mackenzie! Basically what Ludo Studios is trying to do here through this episode of Bluey is explore the fears that children have and the experiences that they have and how that they can be worked through and processed through play. We've seen this before in the episode Copycat where Bluey is processing the idea of death and she works it out through play. She recreates it, reenacts it and is able to come to terms with it. This is the exact same thing that's happened here but this time we just have Mackenzie working through his idea of separation, anxiety and abandonment. Which is pretty deep but not surprising because Ludo has tackled sort of deep subjects before and this is their way of doing it yeah it's look i, I read a lot about play therapy well, i read a lot about play but I, i've mm -hmm. been reading a lot about play therapy in particular and how the um you know the the teachers or the people who facilitate that kind of conduct it and yeah you know you can kids and adults you can get stuck in a you know reliving something you know and it can it can have an appeal to to a kid and sometimes if they've had a, a car accident or something like that their games tend to get stuck i want to pretend that you leave me behind and i'm all alone why i don't know i want to start this by seeing if you can remember one of your earliest memories from when you were a child most likely it's not going to be a positive memory some of our earliest memories usually tend to be a little bit more traumatic or sad or things that make us maybe angry or feel some kind of way because those are the memories that stick in your head the happy ones we don't tend to remember as much because well they were happy there was nothing really traumatizing i guess about them for an example the issue of being abandoned or getting lost is probably the most common experience that a lot of young children feel i know for myself i have that memory from when i was maybe three or four years old i was in i think daycare everyone was napping and when i woke up everyone was gone it was just me left on the ground on my mattress and nothing wrong with that the daycare providers just wanted me to sleep longer because i was still asleep but when i woke up i still remember thinking that i had been left that i had been left alone that my mom hadn't come to get me that i was abandoned even though i know that obviously wasn't the case but i have that memory and that's kind of what this episode is about it's those traumatizing memories or those experiences that we might have had when we were younger and working through them basically so we're going to start at the end where we see little toddler Kenzie and he's going down the slide and he comes out and then he sees this beautiful bright light and it kind of disorientates him a little bit. He's sort of looking around saying mum, mum and that's all he can probably really remember. Now obviously this idea of being left alone from his mum or being abandoned by her has stuck with him and he's never been able to really process it. And as I said before, separation anxiety is a really common experience in children. And Mackenzie, he just doesn't remember past this point of what happened next. So leaving that sort of end scene and going back to the start of this episode, we find out that Jack knows a lot about space and he's 
deciding who's going to be what job and he gives the job of chief scientist to Mackenzie. Mackenzie doesn't know what that means so Jack tells him you know he's the one who figures everything out and fixes stuff and this is basically going to be the journey that Mackenzie goes on for this episode. They then have a choice of either going to Mars or a black hole but Mackenzie doesn't know what a black hole is so Jack explains it. The sun that got really small and makes a hole I think. What happens if you go in it? No one knows. And if you watch Mackenzie's face as he's explaining what a black hole is, you can see that it's triggering his memory of that slide because it sounds almost the exact same. Going in through a dark tunnel, a bright light coming out of nowhere. It's almost the exact same thing in his head and you can see that it's triggered that memory for him. And of course, he then becomes kind of confused by it as well as mad and sad and he starts to act that out. And again, a really common thing of children acting out these feelings through play. Mackenzie also really kind of tests Rusty and Jack by seeing if they will come and find him, seeing if they will abandon him like he feels like his mother abandoned him on that slide. And when Jack finally confronts him about this and realizes that, you know, he's sort of doing this to himself, Mackenzie doesn't even know why he's doing it to himself. He's still really confused. He's trying to process why it is that he's feeling the way it is, like what has caused this. Eventually Mackenzie sort of realizes that he just needs to go to the black hole, like that's what triggered this memory and that's where he kind of wants to go. And so Jack kind of supports him in this and eventually Rusty does too. And they say, okay, if this is your choice, then this is what we're going to do. And I think the confidence that Rusty and Jack have in Mackenzie gives Mackenzie the confidence as well to feel like he is safe to explore these feelings, safe to go through this black hole by himself. And because he's the chief scientist, as he says, it's his job to figure things out and fix stuff. And because of this, he's now less fearful of that separation. So as he goes through that black hole, he relives that memory again, but this time he actually remembers what happens afterwards. Calypso is the one who finds him, who tells him, no, your mom is here, turn around, look. And his mom is there, she pipes him. But because he's able to now relive this memory, he realizes that no, he wasn't abandoned, that his mom was there, that he doesn't need to feel scared or mad that he might be left alone. And then this is where probably this didn't really happen in his memory, Want to be clear though, she wasn't just randomly in the shopping center hanging around the playground. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, no, that's where the sci fi comes, you know, and that's where you lose my daughter. She's like, what the hell's going on? But, um... but he envisions Calypso almost as like this therapist type, and I think we all kind of see her that way too. But she tells him, like, you know what's here now. You don't have to keep coming back to this place. You know what happened afterwards. You don't need to keep coming back thinking that you're abandoned because you weren't. Your mum was there the whole time. You just got disoriented and felt it a little bit lost. So he understands this now and seeing his mum and seeing Calypso, it kind of fades in then to seeing the girls rush forward and his friends coming as well. And you can see that all of a sudden Mackenzie, he feels like he can trust his family, his friends, his teacher, because he knows they're always going to be there to support him and they're not going to leave him alone and of course Rusty is going to always come back for him because that's the kind of guy Rusty is you sure you still want to go to Mars without him oh, Mackenzie come on oh, Rusty oh, help oh, oh, aliens yeah. Mackenzie you made it back So if you know anyone, whether they're an adult or a child who maybe is dealing with anxiety or specifically separation anxiety issues or abandonment issues, I think this is such a great episode to recommend to them. Because then they can see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, that there is a way of being able to work through this no matter what your age is. All you really need is just a lot of support and guidance just to help you get there. And I love that we can see that especially through Calypso and her watching the boys the entire time while they're doing this as well. You can see her in the background and we've seen Calypso kind of do this before especially in one of the new episodes wild girls where she obviously is watching what's happening with coco and indy and she like magically appears to coco all of a sudden out of nowhere to help her deal with an issue that she's had with being left out basically and we see her doing this again with Mackenzie here at the very end scene but uh, from what i read a lot of these play therapists sometimes you've got to recognize when a kid is just stuck you know and they need to just have a little bit of encouragement to to move on you know and so i thought that was a, a lovely little story that mackenzie and his you know his mates they give him that space to you know to be stuck in that and and then you know so clipso is there to to be that person who who just says you know what like you you've seen this now and and she helps him i guess just just un uh un kind of hook from it a little bit 
But basically, that's what happened in the episode Space with Mackenzie and what was going on with his mind the whole time. So I really hope that this just sort of helped you understand Mackenzie's emotions and what's going on specifically in this episode. I have already done an Easter egg breakdown and a like mini explanation of this already when the episode came out in Australia over a year and a bit ago now. So I'll have that in like my 3B playlist because there are a lot of like 2001 Space Odyssey Easter eggs in this episode, which are just really fun to see as well. I'll also be doing an overall review of this episode, plus of course, all the other episodes that are coming out on July 12th on Disney. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below as well as that bell for notifications so you know when those videos are coming out. But until then I have picked you cheeky dogs out a few other videos that maybe you would like to watch and I will see you all in another video. Mwah. Bye!